Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that was really weak, wasn't it? Good morning. Much better, much better. Thank, uh, welcome to Covenant. We're glad you're here this morning. Uh, the ushers are passing out the sign on the tab. As, you, uh, as it comes by, would you please record your attendance? And uh, if any of your bio information has changed, please update your uh, bio information so that we can better serve your spiritual needs in the coming days and weeks. And also, uh, as people come in, if you will also make sure it gets back down the aisle to them so that they can sign in as they come in as well. Uh, also, uh, coming up this week, uh, on Tuesday night, uh, we will be doing the leadership class in, uh, at 7 p.m. in Danko Hall, and, uh, and uh, we, we want you, you invited to come and be a part of that. This is a good time, if you haven't already do, done so, to put, uh, put your cell phones on mute or turn them off or stun or whatever it is and, <laughs> and uh, so that you won't interrupt your neighbors during the service. Also on Wednesday night we will be having family night supper. This week's cook is Jerry uh, Hanley and uh, we're having Christmas in July dinner. We're having baked turkey, squash dressing, green bean casserole, cranberry sauce, sweet potatoes, rolls and dessert. So come and let's have Christmas dinner this week. Baked turkey. Uh, and <laughs> I am not even going to go there with that one. And at 6.30 in the pastor's study, we have upper room prayer, intercessory prayer. You're invited to come and uh, be a part of that. We uh, ran out of space last Wednesday. Ain't that, a, ain't that great when you run out of space when you're having prayer? I mean, that is absolutely wonderful. And so you're invited to come and be a part of that. And then at 7 o'clock, We'll be meeting in here in the sanctuary, and uh, we'll be, uh, I'll, I started a new series last week, and, and there's so much information. The first part, I had to make a part B to the first part. So this is, it's not too late for a fresh start, part B. You're invited to come and be a part of that. Also, I want you to, uh, there are, in the back of the pews, miss you cards. Well, they're supposed to be. <laughs> I saw them in there. <laughs> but if you see somebody, if you, if, if you see somebody, if you miss someone and, and, uh, and you'd like to send them a little card or so forth, please be mindful you can do that and just put it in the offering plate or give it to Kay or one of the board members one. And we will put the address on it and we will put the postage on it and mail it out to you. Amen? Amen. You have an announcement about the uh, fundraiser. This morning, this Sunday morning, this is the last morning that we'll be selling the uh, drawing tickets for the $1,000 travel gift card through AAA. I've heard a little bit of confusion, so let me try to tell y'all real briefly what this AAA gift card is. It's not a AAA membership that you're winning. It's a $1,000 gift card, and you can use this gift card towards anything that is associated with AAA, which is hotel accommodations, rental cars, cruises, anything of that nature that's vacation related. So it's not a AAA membership that you're winning. It's actually a $1,000 gift card. So this morning, this Sunday morning, after the service out at the table in front of the uh, Mother Dorothy Welcome Center, we will be selling the tickets, and this will be the last Sunday. As next Sunday is when we will have the drawing during our morning worship service. It's $5 per ticket, or you spend $20 and you get five tickets, so you basically get four and get one free. So if you have any questions, see whoever's going to be out at the table after this morning's service. Thank you. Thank you. And remember, there's no choir rehearsal in the month of July. They've taken their month off, and we invite you to be prepared to come and be a part of the choir in, when they start up again in August. Amen? Uh, also, I uh, want you to know that some people don't know that not only is the morning, uh, Sunday morning service live streamed, but also Wednesday night. Is live streamed also if you want to tune in for the Wednesday night service and you can't make it. Uh, also want to remind you about electronic giving. You can give electronic and that way you don't have to carry uh, checkbooks and money on yourself and uh, you can see the treasurer or the assistant treasurer today and he can help you with that if you're interested in that. Uh, 
New CV started in the adult Bible school this morning. Eric started a new CV called Live to Make a Difference. And uh, you invited to uh, come and join them at 9 o'clock on, on uh, Sunday mornings at the Lighthouse. Uh, also, we want to uh, make mention that Kay DeMint got a really great report this week on her lungs and her heart test. And... Um, <laughs> As a matter of fact, the doctor said, I don't want to see you for another six months. You know, she's been going every month. He don't want to see her for six months this time. Uh, board member on duty today, uh, you are the board member on duty today. You don't look like Will at all. Uh, no, you don't. She looks butcher than you do. I mean, I'm just <laughs> well, oh, oh, in that case, you do look like Will. But... <laughs> But our board member on duty today is Carrie Key, and the assistant board member on duty is Cynthia Harris, and our staff person on duty is Deacon uh, Susan Green. Susan, now, his mother was here last Sunday, and she said that uh, she was telling me that her mom, her mom goes to this tiny little Methodist church. Where is it? Down in Calera. And so she said, her mama said that, um, well, you know, I thought her, you tell this story. What did she say? <laughs> I like that. There is no. This is third Sunday, so there uh, uh, there is no children's church this Sunday morning. And uh, also, we have birthdays coming up this week. I see that Wayne and I will both will be. Well, he's actually old nine. He's thirty, and I'm twenty nine. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Scholar, little Scholar Lee's birthday. He's going to be fourteen on uh, the twenty third. Wayne Wilson's birthday is on the 25th. Mine and PJ's is on the 26th. And so is Terracar Dixon, who's 12 years old, on the 26th. What a, that's a pretty big day, isn't it? Praise the Lord. And Jennifer Lyle's birthday is on the 27th. And we want to wish all of them happy birthday. We want to thank Kat C Coker for last week's dinner. Did a great job. Thank you very much. And a special thanks to Ron Collins, where's Ron, right there, for his work teaching the Lighthouse the past several months. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> Today is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. If you love the Lord, let's stand and worship the Lord this morning. It seems like every day we're on some type of battlefield doing something. But this morning, we're going to be on the battlefield for the Lord. Amen? Because it's all about the Lord this morning. Let's sing our first song this morning. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord.
as we gather from the world in the presence of Jehovah. this morning. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you that we can bring those troubles and broken hearts to your altar and that you will mend those. Those troubles will vanish and those hearts will be mended. And we thank you for allowing us to do that. And we thank you for allowing us to be here in your presence today. Go with us as we continue in our worship, as we continue to love you as you love us. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. We want you to know that no matter who you are and where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. After all, we are the people of God who live as the people of hope. Therefore, let us declare it so this morning in our covenant affirmation. I am a child of God. I celebrate God's Holy Spirit coming into my life. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I celebrate spirit and power to inspire me, guide me, and motivate me to be a witness of the gospel, offering hope, showing faithfulness, and sharing joy. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we continue in worship. Oh, I'm sorry. We've got children. No, 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 we don't have children. But you need to greet somebody near you. At least speak to James Reed. <laughs> greet somebody around you.
continue with our worship celebration this morning as we sing our praise chorus. I know it's my favorite. I hope it's one of your favorites too. Holy ground. Our prayer book is kept on the pedestal as you come through the front doors of the church. In it are recorded the prayer requests and the praise report of our people. Wednesday night, there's a group of us that meet in the pastor's study for upper room intercessory prayer. And you're invited anytime to join us at that time of prayer. By then, our prayer minister, Jamie, will have made a list. Uh, and uh, by the way, I just want to say it was so good to have the room full last week for prayer. But by then, Jamie, our prayer minister, will make a list and we will lift each one of these prayer requests individually before the throne of grace and then we take it with us to remember people in prayer for the rest of the week. Perhaps you didn't have an opportunity to make your prayer request known. Or maybe yours is deeply personal, but you still would like for us to remember you in prayer. If so, would you signify by the raising of your hand? Amen. This morning, uh, Diana, come on down. Diana is leaving this week for the Mayo Clinic. They're gonna try to find out what's going on with her. And and you go, somebody's going with you, right? My daughter. Your daughter-in-law is going with you, okay? And so we want to be in prayer for her. Joe, would you come and stand for Emmett because Emmett was here and went home sick. And and sweetie, would you come and stand for Kelly? Kelly is not doing real good and uh, a partner are you standing for your partner okay and we want uh, Lynn uh, to stand in for her my sister I know you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit trusting in God's grace and mercy that he will lead the medical professionals to find out what is going on and then do something about it. Joe, not only for you, but also for Emmett. As you stand in for Emmett, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Lynn, as you stand in for Kelly this morning, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you feel comfortable, would you reach forth your hands? Father, this morning we come to you and no other help we know. If thou withdraw thyself from us, we know there is no place to go. And so we come. We come and we believe and we trust this morning that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask. And so, God, we pray for our sister Diana this week. We pray for her travel, but we also pray for the test and all those things that she will be going through. We know that you already know. And so, God, we want it to be made known. And we'll trust your report, God. And we pray that whatever it is, she will be lifted up and healed in the name of Jesus. And, God, we lift up our brother... Uh, we lift up Job, but we also lift up Emmett. And God, we pray that you would be with him. Whatever that illness is this morning, touch it. We know that distance is no problem for you by a word of faith. We remember the centurion said, so you just speak the word and they will be healed. So God, we speak the word this morning and claim it by faith that they will be healed. We lift up uh, our sister Lynn as she stands in for a partner, Kelly, this morning. God, we pray for your anointing on Kelly's life. 
We know that you haven't brought her this far to leave her, but God, we know that you're able to touch even where she is right now. And God, we pray for your anointing in every aspect of their life. God, we pray for all those spoken requests and unspoken prayer requests this morning. And we pray that your anointing will go out and that you'll meet their need according to your compassion, your concern, and your care. And God, so we lift up the people of this congregation. We lift up this community. We lift up those that are troubled in body and spirit, realizing that we're standing on holy ground. And we're standing on holy ground not because we're in church, God, but because your son visits this planet. That makes everywhere we step holy as we walk in your delight. And so, God, we thank you this morning for your grace and your mercy. And we ask, God, that we'll be reminded in worship that we're standing on holy ground. Therefore, your healing and your power is available to us. But we pray it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, amen. We're standing on holy ground. rise in spirit and stand as you are able for the scripture today is from Galatians 5th chapter 22nd through the 25th verse and Colossians 3rd chapter 12th through the 17th by contrast the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness generosity faithfulness gentleness and self-control there is no law against such things and those who belong in Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires if we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, and so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to backtrack just a little bit because we forgot one little small part. Will the children and those young at heart please come forward for the children's moment? there's more young at heart in this church than this. <laughs> Are we all that old? Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, well, this morning I wanted to talk about Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus was this really short guy in a time where people were really short anyway, so he was probably about this tall. <laughs> and not a lot of people liked him because he was a tax collector, so people thought he was this really bad guy because he took their money. Can't really blame him about that. So one day he heard that Jesus was coming to town, and he decided he was going to climb into this really tall tree so that he could see Jesus as he walked by. Well, Jesus is walking, and he gets to the tree, and he stops. And he looks up in the tree, and he says, Zacchaeus, you better get down here, because I'm going to your house. See, Jesus didn't care that nobody else liked Zacchaeus. He didn't care that he was short. He didn't care that he was different. And Jesus is like that with all of us. He loves each and every one of us, no matter if we're tall or if we're short, if we have brown hair, if we have blonde hair, if we wear white shirts, if we wear pink shirts. He loves us all the same. No matter what we do or who we are, he loves everyone the same way. All right. So if you will, I'm going to end in prayer. Dear God, thank you for bringing everybody here today. Thank you for all this young of heart that sit up here, and thank you for all the young of heart that's still sitting in their seats. God, and just be with everybody and open their hearts for the word they're going to hear today. In your name I pray. Amen. Scotty's going to sing a solo for us this morning. And he's crazy, too. I know my limitations. Anyway, good morning, congregation. How are y'all today? All right, this morning, it's third Sunday. And we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna go back to our roots. It's back from where I'm from a little bit, and a little bit from where you're from. Back in, in the days of growing up, we had what we would call congregational call-up choir. And this is, this is the time where we would say, okay, it's time for everybody to come sing and join the choir off. And we would have these, we, we used to call them hymn books. We don't have those these days. It's a thing of the past. But they're such a part of our heritage that we have. But we've actually, we, um, we make photocopies of them now. We have this wonderful technology that we, we have now. So some of y'all, if you've ever sang in the choir or you just like to sing, we're going to ask you to come join us. We're going to sing an old hymn. It's called Just a Little Talk with Jesus. And I know some of you young people people singing this choir so if you've ever sang come on up here and get in this choir and sing with us this morning we're gonna have call up choir today you sing in the bass section you go up there with brother carrie <laughs> Now, this is the way it would be. Call it. Oh, should. Oh, are you going to press this? This is the special section over here. <laughs> and, to, and they would announce today's feature soloist is Paul Odom. Paul, right here in the center. We will, everybody's got your sheet of music. Today's stanzas will be one and three. Paul will do stanza two for us, okay?
it right. Amen. I'm never, just when I think I've seen all, there's always something surprised me. Wayne, were you surprised that James got up and came up and sang? Amen. Give the choir a hand. Amen. The call-up choir. To admit that is fun. That's just plain old fun. Uh, you know, we need to you need to keep that in your repertoire and pull out some of them old favorites and do some more of that. Amen. Thank you, all you call up choir and all you regular choir folks too. Amen. Amen. Well, it's still July and it's still hot. Amen. You know, July is that time of the year we celebrate America's independence and. Is that month you hear a lot about the Declaration of Independence, Constitution, Bill of Rights, and all that stuff. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that, amen? But as Christians, we need to recognize that there is a higher law than constitutions and Bill of Rights. Now, having said that, I'm very patriotic, amen? I love old glory. I love uh, the national anthem when some, some American win at the Olympics. I get teary-eyed when the they stand on the platform and the flag goes up and the Star Spangled Banner is served. I'm patriot. I've served in the military, even in a war zone. Amen? So that's not what I'm talking about. But as Christians, you see, we need to remember God is not an American. Amen? If he was, then what was he 238 years ago since we just celebrated our 237th birthday as America? I want you to hear me clearly this morning. What I'm talking about is for us as Christians, when I say there's a higher law, what I mean, as Christians, we, we assert our rights based on the law. But as Christians, we are to live our lives based on the fruit of the Spirit. And it's a higher law. And too often when Christians are all about asserting them their rights, they often forget to live their lives based on the fruit of the Spirit, that higher law. And so this morning, I want to talk about one of the fruits of the Spirit. I want to talk about gentleness. The Bible, some, you may recognize it from the Bible from the term meek, meekness, but it's translated gentleness. And I want to talk about living in the spirit of gentleness. Let us pray. God, we do thank you that if we'll just have a little talk with you, it'll make it right. God, we thank you for that great old hymn this morning and the nourishment it fed us with. But now, God, we need to be fed from your word. And I ask that you allow me to speak these words with boldness that your people may hear and understand and receive with gladness your word that you have for us this day. For we pray it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen and Amen. Living in the spirit of gentleness. I've already mentioned that Jerry is cooking this week, and he's a great cook. If you've never had his cooking, he's a great cook. And he's going to be doing Christmas in July. And, since, uh, and we invite you to Christmas dinner this week. So since he's doing a Christmas dinner this week, I thought... Why not have a little Christmas humor this morning? And, uh, and so uh, it goes like this. There was a, it was Christmas and a little boy was asked to play the role of the innkeeper who turned away Mary and Joseph and he didn't like that at all. And he protested, he said, I won't do it. That man was mean to Mary and Joseph. I won't do it. And the teacher kept after him and after him. And finally he decided, he, Acquiesce, and he decided to learn his lines. And on the night of the performance, when Mary and Joseph knocked at the door, the little boy opened the door and said, I'm so sorry. There's no room at the inn. But if you want to come in, you can rest a while and have milk and cookies. <laughs> Today I want to talk about living in the spirit of gentleness. 
And I think that little boy qualified, don't you? (laughs) But what does gentleness really mean? You know, in the note from Pastor J.R. this week, I shared the biblical definition of gentleness. And whenever you see the word meekness in the Bible, it is talking about gentleness. And uh, the word gentleness is so misunderstood. People don't like to be called meek or gentle because they think oftentimes that means timid, it means weak, it means you let people run all over you. That is not what the Bible means by the word meekness or gentleness. Let me give you that definition I shared in the, in, in the note from Pastor J.R. The word the biblical word meekness uh, translated meekness and then translated gentleness actually means this sensitivity of disposition and kindness of behavior founded on strength and prompted by love that doesn't sound like timid and shy to me do you you get that sensitivity of disposition and kindness of behavior founded on strength and prompted by love. Now in light of that, listen to that passage again that we read this morning from Galatians 5. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, And it comes right before and self-control. And it says, there is no law against these things. And then in Colossians that you read so well, it says, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself. Wrap yourself up in it. Make sure this is your way of life. That's what he means by clothe yourself. Wrap yourself up in it with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. He's talking to church folk here. My mama used to always like to say, you know, when you read this stuff in the New Testament, he's talking to church people. The Bible's written to church folks. (laughs) And, And he says, bear with one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, you, so you must also forgive. Above All clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, to which indeed you are called to one body, and be thankful. And listen to this. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Most of you are probably familiar with the Beatitudes of Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount that's found in in um, Matthew 5. This morning, I want to talk about some B attitudes. Amen? Some B attitudes, which will let the word of Christ dwell in you richly and it will help you to learn to live in the spirit of gentleness. Amen? Let's talk about them. The first one, you're not going to like. Be obedient. (laughs) We don't like that word obedient because we think of somebody going to be trying to control us, right? But that's not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about being obedient. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about being obedient to somebody. I'm talking about being obedient to God. Most of you probably have heard of the person Gideon. But do you remember Gideon's story? Gideon was the most unlikely hero. Some of you think you got an inferiority complex. You ain't nowhere close to Gideon. Listen to this from Judges, the sixth chapter of Judges. God is talking to Gideon. The Lord turned to him, talking to Gideon, and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Amen. Most people will think, Hallelujah. The Lord is with him. Not Gideon. Listen to what Gideon said. But Lord, Gideon asked, How can I save Israel? I mean, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Is that an inferiority complex or what? But then the Lord answered and said, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites together. 
And then some of you probably remember Gideon put his famous fleece before the Lord. And, and then he put another fleece before the Lord. And then he put another fleece before the Lord. And finally, God got to him, and he, through faith and obedience, trusted God. Even though if you read that story, Gideon thought God was a little nuts. But he decided, I'm just going to trust God, and I'm going to obey God. Now, if you read the story, you know what happened. Gideon, trusting and obeying God, he started out with this big army. God willed it down for 300. He said, don't, don't take nobody but you and this 300. By obeying and trusting God, Gideon took 300 men and defeated 120,000 Midianite and Amalekite soldiers in one night. Now, how did he do that? He did it because despite his doubts, he decided to obey God. And I want to tell you, great things will happen when you're obedient to God. Now, in my own life, I have to be honest. Often when God calls me to do something and I feel insecure about doing it, or I think I just don't want to do this, I don't want to deal with this mess, I find myself dragging my feet. I find myself procrastinating. And yet, time and time again, when I finally trust God and I finally obey God, like, did he, like Gideon did, and do it, it always turns out for the best. Now, I have to be honest and tell you, it, that, I didn't say it always turned out like I wanted it to. And it doesn't always turn out in a way I like doing it. But it always turns out the best. And you'd think I'd learn by now, don't you? At 29 years old, I should know better, right? <laughs> did I say something funny, James? They'll turn on you in a heartbeat, Mother Battles. <laughs> but you think I'd learn by now. But you know what? I'm just like most of you. Why can't we just learn to be obedient to God? It would solve a lot of our problems. And that obedience to God would help us in living in the spirit of gentleness. And the second B attitude I want to talk about is be kind. Be kind. I don't know uh, if any you know, of you remember, it was in the news some time ago, it, uh, around Christmas time, uh, happened in Washington. But it was an extraordinary act of kindness that made the news. It seemed that a regular pat patron of one of the Starbucks in a place called Everett, Washington, uh, did a uh, did something very kind. She paid for the drink behind, for the person behind her. Any of you remember that story? And, uh, and she had done this several times, but, you know, but on this particular day, when she did it, it set off a chain reaction, and 1,013 customers paid for the next person behind them. Now, many of the coffee patrons even threw in an extra 10, 20 bucks which Sarah Nixon, the uh, shift manager at Starbucks Corporation, donated to their annual toy, uh, toy drive. But that spontaneous act of kindness that started at 7.15 on one morning ended at 6.20 a.m. the next morning. Now, the interesting thing, she wasn't even a coffee drinker. She was an iced tea drinker. <laughs> But that iced tea drinker's name is unknown. I'd like to think she's a Christian, but whether or not she's a Christian, her kindness is a prime example of what it means to be living in the spirit of gentleness. And I love that story because it, it, it reminds us, it shows us we all can use a little reminder every now and then to act with kindness, especially if you say you're a Christian. Amen? Now, I know it's so easy to get caught up in our own lives and our own problems and all of that, but God has told us to treat 
others as we want to be treated. That's what she was doing. You see, by looking at others, if you take the moment when before you go off at your mouth and look at others in the eyes of Christ, maybe you'll start spreading God's love and message and make a difference in the lives of those around just by simply being kind. And so I'm asking you this morning, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, why don't you try living in the spirit of gentleness and be kind? Amen? There is another one I want to talk about. It's another be attitude, and that one is be forgiving. I went from bad to worse, didn't I? Be forgiven. We all know what the scriptures say about forgiveness. You, you read them this morning. We're reminded of it every, morning, every Sunday morning during the uh, communion as we uh, say that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. But let's be honest. Sometimes with some of these folks, it's just so hard to forgive. It? <laughs> it is just so hard to forgive. And I think that lost on most of us is the fact that when we don't forgive... It not only erodes your relationship with that other person, and, and that's bad if that person is important in your life, but it also erodes your relationship with God. And when you learn to forgive, you discover this amazing thing that whether or not the other person is lifted by it, it will lift a load off you. It really will. Now, some of y'all have heard me say often, I hate having to practice what I preach. And this one is hidden close to home. Because I've been very angry at a family member. And no, it's not Lula for a change. <laughs> you hear that, Lula? It's not you. And I've written that letter that you can't send to him. Boy, it's a doozy, too. Oh, I feel so good. I got up and danced when I finished it. I told them. <laughs> But I can't send that one. And so I just laid it aside. I ain't did nothing about it. I hadn't done anything about it. I hadn't written the one where I forgive, extend forgiveness. And so Friday morning when I was working on this sermon, what do you think God did to me? I hate having to live what I preach. This is for y'all, not me. <laughs> But I was sitting there and I, I'm just a type and then tears were running down my face because I love this person dearly. And, and I had to stop. I had to listen as God took me to the woodshed and convicted me and told me it's time to write that letter. And it's time to extend forgiveness without any condition. I said, but wait a minute here. I'm going to forgive him, but I'm going to have to let him know about a few things. No, it's time for you to extend forgiveness without the conditions. And because I am an authority figure in that person's life, he said, you ought to speak the truth to him, but you speak it in love, and you don't do it condemningly. You lift that person up, you tell them the truth in love, but you extend that forgiveness to him. I hate that. I wonder if forgiveness comes with a kick. I, I don't think it does. And so I began to write that letter. I hope it lifts his spirits. I know it will mine. Let me ask you something. Is there somebody in your life you need to forgive? Do you remember when <laughs> you said that person was a pain in your... Well, remember that pain in your neck, that pain in your back, that pain in that other part of your anatomy might be directly related to your lack of forgiveness. God changes others and God changes us when we're forgiving. And so I'm saying to you this morning, 
Let's learn to live in the spirit of gentleness and forgive, no matter how hard it is. And let me tell you from someone who's just going through it, it ain't easy. But you got to do it if you want to be whole. Amen? There's another B attitude. You need to learn to be bold. Now, when I talk about being bold here, I deliberately put the issue because of the term meekness and gentleness. You need to understand that when you're gentle, it doesn't mean you're not bold. Amen. You need to be bold in your relationship with God. You need to be bold in proclaiming God's word to others. You need to be bold in living out God's rich truth for your life. Amen. So be bold. Some of you might remember the news story, but most of you probably don't remember the name Bethany Hamilton. Any of you remember Bethany Hamilton? Bethany Hamilton uh, and... Uh, her story is one of being bold. In October 2003, she was a little teenage girl surfing off of uh, the coast of, of, of Hawaii when a, uh, she was attacked by a 14-foot uh, tiger shark, shark, and he ripped off her uh, left arm. And she ended up going to the hospital. By the time she got to the hospital, she had lost 60% of her blood. Her father was already in the hospital uh, waiting to go in the emergency room because uh, he was having knee replacement surgery. And when he heard what happened, he told the doctors, take her. I can do mine later. And they rushed her in and, and, and of course, stopped uh, the bleeding and so forth. But she was so bold. She survived, but she lost that arm. But it didn't stop her from surfing, and it didn't stop her from sharing her faith every time she got a chance. And despite that trauma of that incident, she was determined to go back surfing. In less than a month, after a tiger show, I would be back in that water. You know? I'd rather be a live chicken than a dead hero. But I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but less than a month after her boldness and her determination led her to return to surfing. And, and of course, she wrote about her amazing story in her autobiography called Soul Surfer, a true story of faith, family, and fighting to get back on the board. She didn't, this is what I want you to remember about this story. She didn't let the shark keep her from her passion of serving or being a witness for Jesus Christ. She was bold enough not to let the shark take advantage of her. This morning I want to tell you something. There's a shark called Satan. And he's attacking your faith. There's a shark called Satan that wants to attack your confidence in God. There's a shark calls Satan who wants to keep you from God's best that God has for you. Amen? But the good news is you don't have to give in to it. You can counteract the efforts of that shark by living in the spirit of gentleness and following Bethany's example and being bold in your faith, being bold in who God created you to be, being bold in living your life fully as God intended for you to do so. Amen? There's one last B this morning, attitude. And that is believe. Believe. We're called to believe. We're called to believe in Jesus. And we're called to believe what Jesus taught us. After all, he's the son of God who willingly died on the cross for our sake and salvation. Just so that he could bring to us we might believe in God's unconditional love. We might believe in God's unconditional forgiveness. That we might believe in God's unconditional acceptance. And he did it all for us. H.G. Wells once said, if there's no God, nothing matters. But if there is a God, that's all that matters. He's right. The basic decision we all have to make is in who we believe and in whom we believe. If we believe God, then we need to let God be God in our lives. And we need to stop running. Some of us run from God all the time. Stop running and let God be God in your life. 
You need to just say yes to the work of God in your life. You know, these beatitudes, this beatitude of belief could have come first or it could have come last. Because actually it's both. Because you see, if you, you got to believe in order to be obedient, be kind, be forgiven, and be bold. But every time you are obedient to God, every time you're kind, every time you're forgiven, every time you're bold, it makes it easier to believe. I had a wonderful pastoral counseling session slash mini Bible study <laughs> on Thursday afternoon to one of, with one of our newer members of the church. It was great. I love those sessions. Of all the things I do, I think that's my favorite thing. Those sessions, one-on-one, -on -one, those little mini Bible studies. What I was trying to get over to her and what I'm trying to get over to you this morning is that the more you believe, the more you find yourself going deeper in your faith and your faith gets realer more real every time the more you believe and that's because you find yourself putting into practice the things that you believe how many of you have ever had Kentucky Fried Chicken I mean, have you ever had <laughs> my mom absolutely loved that stuff when Harlan Sanders started his Kentucky Fried Chicken he didn't have very much money at all he um, had no money for advertising and so he thought of a gimmick he grew a white beard he got him a white suit and he was a Kentucky Colonel in the, in, uh, and so he decided to be a walking advertisement for Kentucky Fried Chicken and what I want to say to you this morning is we don't have to put on any special uniform we don't have to wear any special headgear or whatever to be a Christian but Every Christian, as a Christian, every one of us is a walking advertisement for Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you are the light of the world and you can't hide it under the basket. Instead, you're supposed to be a bright light for others to shine. And so I want to ask you this morning, what is your Christian advertisement saying about Jesus Christ to the world? To the commu our community and to those folks you know. What is your Christian ad saying? It's something we ought to give some serious thought to. Paul wrote, clothe yourself with compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. You know, I started off by talking about America. As a, as a, as a citizen of this country, I'm proud to be an American. But as a Christian, I'm even prouder to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I hope my walking ad for Jesus says that. I hope my walking ad for Jesus shows that. And if I wanted to do that, I've got to learn to be obedient to God, be kind, be forgiving, be bold, and I've got to believe. Because those are the characteristics of living in the spirit of gentleness. And this is what it means when it says, let Christ, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And it starts with just saying yes. You know, some of you, yeah, let's, let me read, some of us say yes to everything but God. And that's the only thing that will really work out in the end. And so this morning, I'm asking you to say yes to God. Start living your life based on the fruit of the Spirit. You can start right now. As we sing this little song, I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes. Why don't you say yes to living in the Spirit? Gentleness, would you stand in the seat?
change the song. So it's not in your book. I'll say yes. I'll say yes. Where you lead me. Where you lead me. Where he leads me. Where. God said, you may be seated. We come to that time in our service where we give of our tithes and our offerings, and it's important to know that your tithes and offerings is what allows us as a church to help our fellow members, our fellow congregants, and to help the people throughout the, our state, throughout our own community in our mission of offering hope, showing faithfulness, and sharing joy. Would the ushers please come forward?
because He lives, we can face tomorrow. Father, we're thankful for this day. We're thankful for this opportunity that You've allowed us to come into Your house and give praises to You. Now, Lord, right now I ask that You bless these gifts of tithes and offerings. Allow us to be good stewards of this money so that we can continue to do Your work throughout our community. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. We now pause for a moment to individually confess to you, Almighty God, those things which separate us from you, others, and the best in ourselves. Now let us join together praying the prayer that Jesus taught us praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God's forgiveness empowers us in our living in the spirit of gentleness. Therefore, brothers and sisters, know that God has heard your confessions, and you are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ knew that we would need that extra amount of strength and boldness to be able to be good stewards and to be able to be gentle. So he gave us a reminder that night that he was in the upper room with his friends and his disciples. He took the bread. He blessed it and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. For this is my body that has been broken for each and every one of you. At the end of the meal, he took the cup of Elijah and lifting it to heaven, he gave thanks and he blessed it. And he said, take and drink, all of you, for this is the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant poured out for the one and for the many. Each time that you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you do so to recall me into your life. If you feel comfortable, please stretch forth your hands as we collectively consecrate these elements. Dear Heavenly God, we do thank you. We thank you for allowing Christ to come to this earth to take care of all of our sins and to forgive us so that we can help be able to forgive others. We ask now that you would allow the Holy Spirit to descend upon the seed of the field and the fruit of the vine so that they may become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ in whose name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Here at Covenant, we hold an open communion. What that simply means is you don't have to be a member of this church or of any church because this table was made for you. All we ask is to come with an open heart. This table has been made ready. Now this is a very sacred time of our service. There may be somebody out there meeting Christ for the first time or getting reacquainted with Christ for the first time in a long time. So please be mindful of those around you. Keep the noise to a minimum. There may be someone out there that needs a special one-on-one -on -one prayer. As directly after service, we will have intercessors here at the altar. So they will be more than happy to pray with you one-on-one. -on -one. The table has been set. Come, taste and see how good God is as the ushers direct. Amen.